information on the Tourist Development Council, uh, Tourist Development Taxes, what we do as Economic Development and Tourism. I've got a short presentation here for you, just kind of go through the facts, let you know uh, how the program works. So first off, let's talk about what we're actually dealing with here. There's a, a couple of terms you need to know. One is the Tourist Development Tax. The Tourist Development Tax is a tax that's authorized by Force Tax 125.0104, and it's a mechanism, mechanism to fund the advancement of tourism and attract tourists to Lake County. I'll get a little bit more detail about that in, in a little bit, but that's a, it's a state statute that allows uh, counties to charge a tax for tourists and overnight visitors. The Tourist Development Council is an advisory board that is put together uh, that recommend, makes recommendations to the Lake County Board of County Commissioners. So the Tourist Development Council is just a recommending body, uh, that, and I'll get into a little bit more about who makes that up and what they actually do. Lake County Economic Development and Tourism is a, a public department. We're under the Lake County Board of County Commissioners, and our job is to kind of manage this whole program. So we manage the money, uh, we help with, uh, with the council, we, we point them in the right direction, we, we set the agendas, and we basically manage the Tourist Development Tax Funds based on the recommendations and the policies set forward by uh, Lake County Board of County Commissioners. So who is taxed? Every person who rents, leases, or lets for consideration any living quarters or accommodation in any hotel, apartment, hotel, motel, resort for a term of six months or less. So basically these are tourists coming into to our communities. Uh, any, any hotels, motels, like I said, they are all taxed. And the amount of the tax is 4%. So this is not a tax on the residents of Lake County. This is a tax that only is applied to visitors who come in and stay in our lodging accommodations. What are the eligible uses of TDC funds? There's four. The first eligible use is to acquire, construct, extend, enlarge, remodel, repair, improve, maintain, operate, or promote one or more publicly or not-for-profit owned and operated convention centers, sports stadiums, arenas, coliseums, so any tourist-related facility can be funded with tourist development tax dollars as long as they are publicly owned and operated or not-for-profit owned and operated. The money can also be used to promote and advertise tourism. That can come in a number of different ways. That can come through marketing of Lake County, of the events we have, of the facilities we have, advertising, or event sponsorships. We do a lot of event sponsorships. I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, but any type of event that brings visitors into Lake County that creates an economic impact and create a uh, bed tax, we could use that money to help promote those events. When we promote those events, they do a better job promoting their events and it brings in more visitors. The money can be used to fund convention bureaus, tourist bureaus, and or tourist information centers. That, that would fall under our, our department. So our department is partially funded by the tourist development tax. The last one is to finance beach park facilities or beach improvement maintenance. We're not on the coast, so we won't have uh, that usage here in Lake County. Here's what the tourist development tax revenue has looked like over the last three years. Uh, if you'll see the green is uh, 2010, blue is 2011, and red is 2012. Here are the aggregate numbers. And then here are just basically the monthly and the quarterly. Through two months in 2013, we are up approximately 5% over 2012. I think 2012 was up 2% over 2011, which was up and up 5% over 2010. So the numbers are trending high. So, uh, so what we're doing is working. The TDT revenues are going up. Let's get to the Tourist Development Council. Who are they? It's a nine-member board. They're appointed by the Lake County Board of County Commissioners. Now, the board has to include a certain number of different type of, uh, of board members. One member has to be from the Lake County Board of County Commissioners. In our case, it's Commissioner Welton Cadwell must have two municipal officials, one which must be from the largest municipality in the county, in this case that's uh, Claremont, and it has to have six people involved in the tourism industry. So these can come from any, any uh, part of the tourism industry, except for three or four of them must be from a hotel or some type of a hotelier. They have staggered terms of four years, and it's the government and the Sunshine Law Committee, so everything they do must be made public. What do they do? They meet once a quarter, they make recommendations to the Lake County DCC regarding the effective operation of the TDC funds, and they review the expenditures of our department and of all the TDC funds to make sure that they're being uh, utilized correctly. Economic development and tourism. I've mentioned a little bit about what we do. We have, a, at the county, we have a, a eight-step economic action plan, and, and, and which has eight goals in it. And one of those goals is, is tourism. So 
So I just kind of wanted to show you this so you have an idea of what, what we do. Uh, we work directly with the business community, cities, and other stakeholders to promote ecotourism, recreation, sports, and tourism. That's our goal when it comes to tourism. That's our department's goal. And we've got an action plan here. I won't go into all of these, but basically, two years ago when they put this into place, these are the things that the board wanted to see tourism do. Complete and implement a new TDC grant application process. We've done that. Uh, target new events that generate overnight purchases in Lake County. We're working on that. That's what the whole point of this program is, is to target new events and to bring visitors in. Here's the budget. So the total annual operating budget in 2013 fiscal year was $1.7 million. All of that is from the bed tax. That's from the 4% bed tax. Funds that, that budget. 615000 of that was budgeted for marketing and sponsorships. So that could be sponsorships of events. It could be marketing in magazines. It could be billboards. Whatever the case may be, uh, that's what that fund's for. Salaries and benefits, that amounts to our department and, and, uh, and the staff that we have. Reserve transfer. Reserve transfer, the board, when we decided to do capital projects, the board said we need to transfer a certain amount every year uh, into the reserve to, to hold for capital projects. So that's what that number is. And administrative costs, we have to pay a certain fee to the county uh, to be able to have the, the office space. We also have to be able to run the department. So that's the administrative cost. Right now, the balance in the fund is about $3.5 million, as you can see it right there. And, uh, According to statute, only 75% of that can be used on capital funds. I'll get into that a little bit more. So we have 2.6 million right now in the reserves that can be used for capital projects. I want to tell you a little bit about sponsorships, just so you know how the money is being used currently. Last year, in 2012, uh, TDC sponsored 76 events. 48 different unique organizations or uh, applicants were, were given awards for a total amount of $390,000 which generated 41,000, almost 41,000 room nights and over 50 million in economic impact. So that's a good return on investment when you're looking at the dollars that were spent compared to the money that came in. So capital projects. Uh, the capital projects were, were first introduced in 2011. As I said, this is something that's allowed under Florida statute. Uh, they're done in 2011. Uh, in, I believe at that point, we, we had one award that was given to the National Training Center in South Lake. Uh, last year, we had a couple more applications. Uh, we decided that the policy wasn't as tight as it needed to be. So we said, let's table it, let's go back to the drawing board, and let's figure out a policy that's going to work. So we recognize the need for updating. Uh, we went out and we conducted detailed research on 31 counties in Florida and looked at what are they doing with their capital money, or what are they doing with all their bed taxes. 25 of the 31 counties utilize their revenues on capital projects. And the average for capital expenditures was over 30 percent in each of those cases. So their total budget, they're spending over a third on capital projects. The TDC held a workshop, and um, what the TDC decided was, again, let's uh, let's allocate money every year to a reserve, and these monies can then be used for capital projects. So capital project, what is it? A capital project can be one of three things: new construction, expansion. Renovation, replacement project for an existing facility or facilities. The project must have a total cost of at least $25,000 over the life of the project. It could be the purchase of major equipment, that's more than $25,000, or a major maintenance or rehabilitation project with a cost of more than $25,000. To be eligible for funding, the project must be located in Lake County. It must be publicly owned and operated, not for profit owned and operated. It must be open to the public for recreational activities. This can't be private use. It has to be open to the public. And it has to bring substantial numbers of visitors and tourists to Lake County. So here's the process. This is, this is how we're going to go through awarding these capital project uh, awards. We have two cycles every year. That's the board decided to do. So we'll have a funding cycle in the spring and a funding cycle in the fall. We have an application. The applicant fills out the application and submits it to the Lake County EDT. Our staff reviews it. We have questions, we send out sufficiency questions to the applicants. The applicants then send us back. We review it, and then we send the entire package with the recommendation to the TEC board. The TEC board reviews it, the applicants have a chance to present in front of the board, the board has a chance to ask questions of the applicant, and then we come back for a second TEC meeting where that board, the TEC board, will have a vote to recommend to the Lake County Board of County Commissioners. Two weeks later, or around that time, the Lake County BCC will then make the final determination on the award. 
So what are we looking for? These are the inputs that, that we look for. We created, we're calling the capital impacts funding model. And the capital impact model, we'll call CIM for short, uh, takes into account a number of different in inputs and then helps us to uh, look at the different projects on a relative basis. And I'll get into the methodology of how it works and how we arrive at an award from the model. But the inputs, we look at the net increase in hotel room nights. So not just, if you have a project, and then you want to add a little piece of the project. You don't get to count all of the room nights that you were generating before. It has to be net new room nights that can be contributed to this new project. The net increase in visitors to Lake County. Again, what kind of new visitors are you getting because of this? The capital investment in the project, the applicant's percentage of total capital investment. How much is it going to be used? The frequency of use. Is it going to be used once a month, or is it going to be used every day, 365 days a year? Uh, how much are you going to be spending locally on your annual operating budget? and the projected useful life of the project. So we're looking at all those things to determine the best way uh, to offer this money up. So the way that the model works is, we look at those bed tax revenues that will be distributed out each year, and then we bring those back to a present value number. So it's very simple. Uh, you're gonna generate a certain amount of room nights, those room nights are gonna generate some revenue for the TDT. We take those revenue streams, we take the present value, that's a base award. So you start with that, and then you can get bonuses on that award based on your economic impact, which is the amount of dollars you bring in that are circulating through the economy, how much you are going to be contributing to the project, as well as the frequency of use. So what happens is we throw all those numbers on, on, on this page into the model, and it tells us here, this is, this is the award, this is the maximum award that we recommend giving for this project. Then we will then take that recommendation to the TDC board, the TDC board will make their recommendation to the Lake County Board of County Commissioners who will ultimately decide how much the award is going to be. Just some other factors that impact the award. We look at the feasibility of the project. We look at the management capacity. Who's going to be running it? Can they run it? Had to demonstrate they could run it in the past. The quality and the uniqueness of the project. Do we have 100 of these out there already or is this something that's unique uh, that will add to the value of what we already have? Uh, are there any local competing facilities? We care about that. We don't want uh, a, a lot of competition. Uh, benefit to Lake County tourism. Is it going to benefit the tourism um, industry here? And uh, the commitment of the applicant to, to promote tourism in Lake County. So we're looking at a number of different things. And we're going to use assistance from industry experts and subject matter experts. Uh, you know, we'll, we utilize the Central Forest Sports Commission. We'll utilize whatever clubs or organizations might happen to uh, oversee whatever the project may be. Uh, so, so we're taking a, a real comprehensive approach to evaluating these projects. Reporting requirements. There's a ton of reporting requirements, so you can't just build it, get your money, and then ride off into the sunset. You've got to provide reports on the construction. You've got to write, provide status reports. You've got to give us room nights. Uh, so we're going to be checking. They're going to be auditing. And if certain thresholds are not met, then we're going to be asking to get the money back. So the important dates to know, May 6th, that's the first TDC board meeting, board meeting where the applicants are going to be making their presentations. <coughs> Uh, there's going to be uh, project discussions, that's when we'll discuss uh, everything related to the project. The second TDC board meeting is on May 20th, then it'll go to the Lake County Board of County Commissioners on June 18th, and finally, then in the fall, we'll have the second funding cycle. And that's all I have on this. So I'll, I'll be here afterwards to answer any questions.
Zero. Right? That's okay, not me. I mean, I have a rope bug, but that was about it. And also the economic impact that we think uh, will have for Lake County. About two years ago, uh, I went and met with a gentleman named Mike Malay at Walt Disney for Wild World Sports. At the time, the city of uh, uh, Claremont as well had an application in for a multi uh, purpose sports facility, a large indoor sports facility, similar to what the Lemons just built in, in uh, Paris, right? And uh, so we were talking to him, I was talking to him from a county perspective about, you know, does this make sense to invest in a big project like this? And, and uh, he, he more or less said, this type of project is not a building they will come. Because I've got two indoor field houses right here with me, I struggle to keep them filled, and I said, how about softball fields, multi-purpose fields? Put me in his golf cart and drove me out to his, his mega sports complex. And uh, he, he said, You know, you're competing with me and Polk County and Seminole County and Osceola County. Uh, he goes, So every, he goes, well, whatever you do, he goes, make sure that you have your business plan behind you. everything you do. He goes, If I want to build one softball field in Walt Disney World, because I'm Walt Disney World, if I want to build one softball field, I've got to do a complete pro forma business plan and show my role of next impact, my economic impact, so, so, so I can sustain and support this field and make a profit this, this business. And so, so he, he encouraged me to look for niches that are not so competitive um, in the region. And he actually suggested to me the time rowing, but we'd already been talking about rowing, but he said, for example, rowing, you see Lake County, lakes all over the place, because that's something you might want to consider uh, utilizing other people's rolling decks. You know, the colleges come here all the time for different things. So that kind of started my interest in, in rowing, but um, I want to give you a little outline of what we're going to talk about tonight. But the overview, background, our application, and I'm going to sum it all up for you. Uh, rowing is, is a highly competitive sport. It's practiced worldwide. Matter of fact, it was the first Olympic sport. That was going to be a test question. Man, I was going to give you the answer. Uh, uh, rowing was the first Olympic sport. Uh, it's, it's still an Olympic sport, very competitive. Uh, have you ever did you at least see rowing on the Olympics? Did anybody watch that? So you know, so, so you know what? It's, you know, we'll show you some pictures. Um, rowers you know, develop it's, it's, a, it's a high end sport. Uh, the demographics is great. Generally speaking, uh, you know there, there are colleges that have uh, you know scholarship availability to uh, elite athletes. Uh, and also, obviously, with sports, any sports, it creates that teamwork, that discipline, that physical stamina. Uh, rowing and other related uh, regattas, you know, you know, we're looking at a rowing event, I mean, a rowing venue in Lake County, but it also can be kayaking and other types of water race related events that are non motorized. Um, Lake County has a unique advantage for hosting these events uh, for, for uh, rowing in, in the regatta community. And I'll talk a little bit about how we got to uh, at least this application, but I'm going to go a little, a little bit of the background. I'm happy to watch this. I apologize for that. In, uh, early on, in the early 90s, uh, Lake County actually had competitive rowing uh, in Lake Mineola. It was active for four or five years, and it kind of went away. And no one really knows why it went away. I, I just think it didn't get a lot of support locally. And they just kind of, they were collegiate rowers, and they just kind of backed up and, and went away. And then about five years or so ago, uh, there, was, there were some local initiatives from some, some ex-collegiate rowers uh, who uh, teamed up and worked with a local law firm, Brett Jones, uh, PA, who uh, helped them organize as a rowing club. And, <coughs> and then you know, they've been going to, to meetings and stuff and talking about rowing and how they thought rowing would benefit uh, from an economic development in Lake County. And they were talking to us in the county. And uh, they actually started their own learn to row programs, which you've never rowed. You, you, know, you can go down there and learn how to do this, whether you're a high school student or, or whether you're retired. Uh, you can go down and, and, and enjoy rowing with these learn to row programs. And then late uh, uh, last year, I think last fall, we had the president of USA Rowing, Lynn Mary, come down. So I'm going to talk to an expert. This is the president of USA Rowing. Uh, Central Florida Sports Commission uh, invited him down. And we took them on a little tour of Lake County. We went up to uh, Eustis. Uh, we came to Tiberi's area, Tiberi's outdoor area, and Claremont. And we kind of took him on a little fan tour, they call it, just so you get familiar with the area. And uh, 
when, when he saw Lake Mineola, this is before I was in there, and when we saw Lake Mineola, he said, because this is your spot right here, because you've got this, you know, several thousand feet of white sandy beach, uh, you can put a two meter, uh, uh, 2,000 meter course in, uh, as, as a single race course, which is, I think it's the only one in Central Florida. And two, because with your side of the lake, you can actually go to, you know, 5K, 10K type races. Because the, but it, it, this is the perfect spot. Because out of the three you've shown me, I think this has the most opportunity. So, what are, what are we asking for? Um, you know, with, with TDC funding, you, you have to have matching funds. You can't just come and ask for money from the county from, you know, you know, from this pocket of, of uh, tourism tax without uh, having your own skin in the game, so to speak. Um, and uh, what we're asking for is, uh, you know, support. Th these are all the basics that you need to. Uh, these are all the basics of what you need to put on a competitive, growing venue. You know, you need more than just water. You know, we have the water. We have to pay for that thing. Um, but a boathouse is kind of gives you a picture of what a boathouse looks like. And I've got Brock, do me a favor. Uh, there are just some copies just passed around, There's some samples of, uh, just passed around, and some other examples of boat houses. But you can see, you can see in here these long lines, or long, these long competitive row boats, and they're, they're, they're common for, for uh, you know, all the rowing facilities across the country and worldwide. So you got to have a place to store these boats, they're very expensive, and you have to have a place that's not, uh, you know, protected by the weather. And it's got some conditioned air, um, not air conditioned air, but just you know, it's, it's a piece of moisture out. And it's a place where teams and clubs and visiting organizations can store their boats. When they travel, they travel these long trailers. They go from here to the back of the wall. When they unload the boat, they don't like to unload it every night. They don't like to unload it, store it somewhere, and then and then go on for the trip. Uh, the boat racks to go inside. The boat docks that you need. Give some examples. These people stand out on boat docks. You have to have places for the boats to, to start and, and come back to. There's different races, different heats, um, launches. Uh, I don't know if you can see it here, but there's actually people in small boats, uh, like little uh, John boat type things, that follow the races around. And, and you know, these are the judges, the referees, and stuff. These uh, uh, ergon meters, the ergos, they're, they're, they're stationary rowers, you know, so when teams come in, they need to warm up, they sit on these, uh, you know, you might see them at the gym, if you go to work out, like you all did this morning probably, you probably saw this rowing machine, that, 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 a more sophisticated version of that, and bleachers and, and, and those types of things that uh, you need if you're going to put on an event. This is all about economic development. You know, we had someone ask us about high schools and, and you know, the opportunity for our high schools. I, I said, that's great, and I, I think that will happen. That does happen in some of the big growing communities nationwide. Uh, but we're starting with, with economic development. We're starting with, we want to attract these collegiate teams from all over the country, especially in the Northeast, where most of the, the, the elite growing organizations are, to come here and train in some, I mean, in the West. Uh, it's train, 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 train. And if you think about it, you're up in New Jersey in December, and they row in December, in November, in January. They're not ice on the river, they row. And they're crazy. I lived up in D.C. for five years, going over to the Potomac, going to work every morning. I see these crazy people out on the Potomac River, and it's 34 degrees <laughs> out, and they're rowing. I'd rather come to Central Florida and row. Specifically, I'd rather come to Lake County and row. Right? Make sense? So, that, so that those are the, the people we're trying to attract. We think Lake County will become the venue for competitive rowing training. Uh, we offer uh, things that other counties can't offer. Excuse me one second. See that. Uh, <coughs> uh, I want to just share this with you. It's not about rowing, but it's about it's about an investment, capital investment. Uh, economic opportunity. Anybody read the Seminole County article this morning in the Seminole? I know you love the Seminole, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you, in case you missed it, I just want to highlight it for you. Uh, the city, uh, I mean, the, you know, the 
Seminole County is looking to invest. They have two different pricing here, 7.5 million to 15 million, up to 20 million in, in dirt for a multi-purpose sports complex. And the reason I'm telling you that is because Polk County is doing it. They probably have got over 50 million invested. Osceola County is doing it. Seminole County is doing it. These people understand the sport is big business. Big tourism. <coughs> the number one tourist attraction we have in Lake County today is sports. That's like 70 percent, 80 percent, Robert, Adam, somewhere around there. It's, it's, it's the most. Now, granted, we have the Wings Wildflower Gym, right? So we're, we're, we're diversifying a little bit. And this is kind of what we're trying to do with road. We've got boat races, we've got bass fishing tournaments, we've got softball tournaments. We have to diversify our base a little bit in order to compete with some of these other surrounding counties. Because all of them like to come to Central Florida, especially because of our weather, our climate, but they also like to go see Mickey and is taking advantage of that. So I just want to share that with you. If you have a chance to read that. And, and all that, by the way, is from their TD, their, their, their tourism development tax plan. If you're in Orange County, you're building a multi-story performing arts center. We don't have that kind of money. So we're, we do little things that have bigger impact, or try to. Um, we'd be the only 2,000-meter two, training course with the opportunity for up to 10,000 meters to go around Lake Mineola. Uh, we anticipate in the first, you know, five years, uh, over 25 events and over 10,000 rooms. And you know, this is, we're just starting out, so you don't know exactly. You're asking for a history, you don't have one. You know, we're, we're trying to create something here. All we have is subject matter experts that are in the industry that kind of tell us uh, of the opportunity that they think we have. These are just some of the folks in the last 60 days that have lent, lent, lent their support. The big ones, the United States Rowing Association, the Central Florida Sports Commission, who, by the way, is under contract with Lake County to bring events into Lake County. If they do that, we keep them. If they don't do that, I'd recommend we don't keep them. But right now, they're doing a great job. Uh, Lake County Rowing Association, just mentioned. Uh, the hospital, Stetson, Miami, Mancy County, Tampa, uh, and we also have our, 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 our local legislators that support support this as well. I just want to give you an idea, and, and we start receiving letters daily, and we'll probably have more before we have to go in front of the TDC from other universities that says, if you build it, I will consider you for my training. This kind of breakdown of the budget. Construction of the boathouse, design fees, and what we did is we went out to a company that built boathouses all over the world, and they gave us an estimate on their on, on their cost. It's called simple boathouse, about half a million dollar simple boathouse, right? Um, but what we did is, is we took their specs and we took it to a local a local builder, um, and we asked him every construction. You know, you guys know them, and we, and we asked them to give us uh, their version of the you know, similar type of boat out. They came in about, about $100,000 less. Um, so that's good. Infrastructure, all, all these all these uh, estimates were provided by professionals. The dock, the course fees, it's more you know a slalom course on a water ski. This is a very sophisticated course anchored to the, to the uh, ground. Uh, fees, permits, launches, bleachers, training equipment, concrete and training equipment, etc. We think that uh, this is a very unique opportunity for uh, Lake County. But uh, this could be the first uh, competitive rowing location in Lake County. I think there, we probably have the capacity to do more than one, two, maybe three. Uh, as time goes on, we build up our, our demand. Uh, we think it would be the most attractive location in the Central Florida region. Uh, it adds a, a competitive uh, infrastructure uh, that we can compete with our neighboring counties because, trust me, they're very aggressive and they're, they're, they're out to clean our clock. Uh, we have utilized the local, and we have available local subject matter experts uh, to manage and drive these events. These are ex-collegiate and still competitive rowers today. Um, so they're not, it's not like they did it 25 years ago and now I'm telling you what to do. These people are still rowing today competitively across the country. Uh, the ongoing facility maintenance will be done by the city of Fairmont. And, uh, and of course, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the Fairmont will provide uh, and has to provide a uh, matching commitment. So the city of Fairmont is not going to spend a penny on anything in 
unless we know it's a wise investment for the taxpayers of well, Claremont. You know, that, that's our job. So even though these budgets are up there, as we go through this process, if we can save a nickel, a dime, a quarter, all the way through the process, we're going to do that. But this is this is the best information that we've had uh, provided to us thus far. So I hope that gives you a little bit of background about what we're asking uh, for from the county, and I'll also be here to answer any questions. I don't know, might be doing now. I think it's all I need. presentation over to the city of Leesburg. We have Ray Sharp and Jay Hurley here. And I guess Mr. You guys can both come up. Great. That's awesome. Ladies and gentlemen. Jay Hurley. Ray Sharp. Good afternoon. Thank you for uh, asking the city of Leesburg to come out and give you a little bit of an idea of what our vision is and uh, what we're trying to do. I appreciate Mr. Sharp. He is our interim city manager and has done just an absolute Mr. Sharp's name speaks for himself. He is the sharpest guy in town. So he is here to kind of help uh, answer some questions maybe that you have today after we get through our initial presentation. I will be a little bit more focused now, and I'll explain that just a minute, one, but it's going to be more focused on just kind of what our vision for the city has been. Um, I'm a new commissioner. I was just elected this year, so I begin my term uh, in the 1st of January and have a great time. So I, I will try to give you at least some of the excitement that we have come together as a board and commission with. One of the things that we have done this year is in some of our initial meetings, we have made the decision uh, as the city of Leesburg to get uh, on, on board with one focus, one vision, one mindset, and we are going to put our focus uh, in the city of Leesburg on family. That's going to be what we really want to be. We want to be a community that is focused on quality of life aspects to the family. And so as a result of that, we started looking around as we look at our budget or as we, as any other city, we realize uh, the issues that are facing us right now in this tough economy. And we started looking at what uh, economic development we could do. We also considered uh, what some of our best assets were. And one of the greatest things that Leesburg is known for is the Nation Gardens. And so we started putting our focus on what we could do Edition Gardens to bring in uh, some economic development and to bring in some excitement and to help us start reaching the goal of bringing the, the spirit of family back into our community, making families want to live in Leesburg instead of any of you other cities that may be. <laughs> <laughs> we think that Leesburg is best and we're going to continue with that until I'm voted out of office and run out of town. So we, we look and, and we have started a lot of things in this Gardens. Uh, as far as where our focus is, and one of those things was um, years ago when we added the marina, we had put in a, um, a weight zone uh, where you couldn't have any kind of weight on your boating, and so we're in the process right now of lifting that, trying to get it where it was more inviting to boaters to come back into the basin, uh, where we can have uh, some draw there back like it used to be when families wanted to ski in the basin, or when we had the bass tournaments there, and things of that nature. Uh, we partnered up with one of the businesses in town, Petrali, and they are now helping us focus on uh, getting Monkey Island, as it's <coughs> uh, which is right there, a little island in the basin, cleaned up, and we're, we're working on doing some things with the pavilion there and, and benches and stuff of that nature. So uh, as we were going through the initial gardens, looking at what we could do, one of the things that had come up uh, was there was a request by USA Volleyball, it's Beach Volleyball, and they were looking to come inland, all their facility locations, were on the beach, and so what they were trying to find was someplace they could come inland, and apparently they looked and realized, as I and other Leesburg residents realized, that Leesburg is the best place to be. <laughs> if I said that, I'm going to say it a lot today, in case some of you are wanting to move. Leesburg is the best place. So as they looked at our facility, what we looked at is on the south end of Venetian Gardens, we do have several acres of Venetian Gardens, it's approximately 65 acres in size, and we have a large portion there that we could uh, facilitate and help USA Volleyball and be able to have a complex and then it would be beneficial to us and the residents of Leesburg. Initially, we were looking for uh, a volleyball complex that would have 20 courts 
and would be able to have uh, tournaments maybe every week, every other week, on, as far as on the weekends, and they would bring in somewhere between three to 500 uh, participants, and, and we were looking at what that would do as far as economically <coughs> give us a boost in our tourism dollars. Uh, since then, we, we did put in our grant proposal and made our request, and uh, as we started going through with Lake County and the formula, there we realized that we are uh, going to have to, even though we have fulfilled uh, a huge part of our obligation for the grant request as far as the land value that we were able, there was still going to be uh, some investment that was going to be required on the city of Leesburg. And for us, when we started looking at our budget that we're going through right now, we just didn't see where we had uh, the funds right now available in this current budget to do a capital project like this. And so we have actually. <coughs> Our letter, and we have withdrew our request. At this time, we're going to consider later. Uh, part of the problem was we, you know, how things go. You're looking at making things fit. We had went from 20 uh, volleyball courts down to 12, and we had uh, put some restraints on it. It could only be one tournament a month, and it could only be one day. So when we did the formula, uh, looking at what the reduction would be as far as the draw, as far as the amount of people coming, we just could not meet. The, the demand that we thought we needed and, and to be able to feel what the county needed. So we have actually made <coughs> through ours. So I can stop with a period right there and say we have went through this, so I'll give you some ideas. Or if you'll always raise your hand and say you enjoy listening to politicians, I will give you another 20 minute spiel about how good Leesburg is and why we trump all the other cities that are here. Uh, I have no problem telling you about that because truly our focus is we, we understand. You know, you, you've got to, as, as, the, as the issues of, of budget comes up, you know, we've looked at, you know, your revenue that's coming in, and you have on taxes and those things. We understand clearly that quality of life is the key push that you've got to focus on to bring in the draw that you want. So our focus right now is going to be on quality of life, and then, of course, you've got to look at the level of service that you want to provide as a community. And so we're trying to understand what level of service our city wants because we understand that the higher that level of service goes, the higher that price tag goes. And so we're trying to meet that demand, uh, provide the level of service and the quality of life that our residents want to maintain that level of being the best city in all of Lake County. And, uh, and, and then we're going to look at how we can bring in Brooks. We have some wonderful sports complex already. I mean, uh, that is such an important role, and we can speak on that, but there's going to be a lot of questions later. Uh, on the family aspect, the role that sports play, what it does as far as the community, how it impacts the families as well. So we're going to put our focus on, on quality of life, we're going to put our focus on uh, level of service, and then we're going to maintain the what? The greatest city of the <laughs> So, Mr. Sharp, if you want to, you want to kind of give them a little more of the details. Uh, Rebuttal. Any Sharp, look at it. And then we'll ask you any questions. Just a brief overview of the uh, project uh, as, we, uh, as we have finally proposed it. Uh, as Mr. Early said, there's going to be 12 uh, volleyball courts. Uh, they are all going to be beach volleyball, regulation beach volleyball courts. Uh, the intent of the uh, USA Volleyball Association was to bring in tournaments of all kinds. So we would have uh, high school, uh, NCAA. Uh, Tournaments as well as professional circuits that are out there themselves on the that, that, that play uh, beach volleyball. Um, we uh, originally the intent was uh, for multiple weekends a month because of community concerns. We had to scale that back uh, to, to one a month. And when you do the math, you, you saw uh, you, you saw Robert, uh, Robert's presentation earlier from the counties perspective and what the goals are of this grant process for this particular one is to incentivize additional uh, tourism here in Lake County. So for us at this time, that didn't work, uh, unfortunately. Uh, we still think it's a very good project and very strong staff support. We enjoy the strong support from, uh, from our commissioners. Um, we got, as you can read the paper, we had a, a really nice and interesting long uh, community meeting on the subject, but in the end, we found consensus, we found uh, general agreement on the project.
budget um, and, but, and we will revisit it again uh, through our budget process. So thank you. So we'll bring the city to Barry's up, led by City Manager John Drury.
the community asks that it be rebuilt, and we are creating one of our economic anchors for our downtown to create Tiberias as a destination. The second area I'd like to touch upon is why is this city building the Pierre Pavilion in a manner that it will generate, produce revenues? When the city took on the task of implementing its citizens' vision and its downtown master plan with its multiple economic anchors, it adopted a philosophy of civic entrepreneurship. Every facility that it builds must try and become self-sufficient so as not to be dependent on property taxes. A couple of examples of that philosophy in play in downtown Tiberias. The Splash Park. Most Splash Parks in Florida are free, and they are subsidized by property taxes. I've taken my six-year-old daughter to the one in Tampa. It's free. I've taken her to the one in Cocoa Beach. It's free. Taxpayers are paying for it. In Tiberias, we charge $2 per child. We have had over 70,000 children over the last three years visit our facility, bringing in $140,000 to pay for the staffing, the electricity, and the chemicals. So it's not dependent on property taxes. Civic entrepreneurship. The seaplane base, those seaplane bases in America do not generate any money. They are subsidized by taxpayers. We have sold over 500,000 gallons of fuel, last count. We lease out space to the flight training operation. We sell t-shirts, ice cream, and sodas. This revenue offsets the operational cost of the seaplane base and marina. Civic entrepreneurship to reduce our dependency on property taxes to operate that facility. The train station we just built. We pre-lease our train station to the Cannonball Operator and the Tiberius Chamber of Commerce. One of the tenants contributed $150,000 for its construction. Again, the leases are there and in place with a civic entrepreneurial approach to reduce dependency on property taxes so that these facilities have an opportunity to someday pay for themselves. The marina, just like Leesburg, who has a marina, beautiful marina, Okay. And, charges <laughs> <laughs> and charges for boat slips, so does the ferries, to offset the cost of operating the marina to be not so dependent upon property taxes. The pavilion on the lake, the project that we submitted for TDC funding over three years ago, it has a business plan, like any good entrepreneur would have. And it calls for generating sufficient revenues so as not to be a long-term burden on property tax rates by hosting events, conventions, conferences, and community gatherings and weddings. I hope you have an understanding now of why we are uh, charging in producing revenue producers for our economic development program. The last thing I'd like to touch upon before I invite Tamara to give you an insight of this facility is a question that has been posed from time to time that I think deserves some discussion and thought that I'm sure you have all thought about. Should public entities operate facilities that the private sector builds and operates? <coughs> Very good question. Well, as you know, as you heard from Robert, in order to be eligible for any of these grants, the law says you must be a public entity or a not-for-profit. In many communities throughout the United States, public entities build and operate facilities that the private sector builds and operates too. Examples include marinas, I heard about that, Golf courses, hockey rinks, colleges, private colleges and public colleges. Sporting arenas, public and private. We have a private sporting 
arena into various there are public sporting arenas being built. Zoos, parking garage, hospitals. Now they're doing jails, cemeteries, tennis courts, swimming pools, campgrounds, baseball parks, summer camps, concert halls, convention centers, conference centers, and wedding facilities are just a few. The reasons that a community may develop or provide a facility or service that the private sector does too are as varied and wide as the number I've just, the examples I've just given you. They're all wide varied. Why the public sector gets involved in building or operating a facility that the private sector does too. But as for severities, I'd like to share you our reasons. One of them was because our citizens asked us to, and the city council responsible for the community responded to its constituents' request. The other is, our town needed a series of economic anchors to create that one destination that I talked about, America's seaplane city. You see, between the year 2000 and 2006, which was one of the most robust economic periods in Florida's history, Tavares was atrophied. While other communities were experiencing growth and economic prosperities in their downtown, Tavares was experiencing a mass exodus, vacant buildings everywhere. You could lay in that street all night long and you'd never get run over by a car. <laughs> <laughs> Although we could not have picked a worse time to invest in ourselves, the Great Florida Recession of 2008, <coughs> 9, 10, as a result of this city investing in itself with that civic entrepreneurial spirit, tens of millions upon millions of private sector dollars has been infused into Tavares little economy, creating many new businesses, many new private sector jobs. In fact, over the past three years, the tax burden on our residents has shifted from carrying 80% of the burden to down to 65%, and we expect that will be down to 60 this year. Property values are holding their own. We're usually in the top 10%. We used to be in the bottom. Tavares wants to continue that trend, and Tavares believes that this economic anchor will contribute significantly towards that trend. We are not unique in Lake County or in Central Florida when it comes to building and operating <coughs> facilities that the private sector operates too. We are just late. Other cities in the area who have constructed, owned, or operate facilities that the private sector operates to include most of our cities. Leesburg, Venetian Gardens, a wonderful facility, both conventions, conferences, weddings, and community meetings. Eustis, its community center, Boasts conferences, weddings, receptions, parties, family reunions, and special events. Mount Dora's community center over here, just renovated. Conferences, receptions, concerts, theatrical production, <coughs> movie screenings, and special events. Claremont just built a new multi-million dollar, 10,000 square foot facilities receptions, parties, events, meetings. And Lake Mary, next county over, and I'll just quote from their web page of what they're doing there. The Lake Mary Event Center is the jewel of the city's downtown redevelopment area. Located on the shores of West Crystal Lake, the center provides the ideal location for business meetings, weddings, receptions, banquets, parties, and retreats. Again, the City Council of the Berries are civic entrepreneurs trying to create a balance 
between economic prosperity for our community and reduced property dependency. I would now like to ask Tamara to give a brief overview on the pavilion so you have a feel for what it is that's being built there. And when Tamara is done, I'll ask Bill to give an overview of the other project.
from the Tourism Development Council. One dollar for every night. You, it doesn't get any better than that. Where I come from, <coughs> an ROI like that, you want to sign those dotted line with that. So there you are. Let's, uh, that's what we're requesting is that they form a partnership with us. And in return, we're going to give everything back to the, to the, uh, to the hotel. Um, I have a little hand up more, if you will indulge me. My lovely assistant here. Um, we, we just did a little snapshot of local hotels that surround the Pavilion Project. It's just a, a little smattering of hotels that are in close proximity. And there they are. People that we will, we will be booking this facility to, they will not all be our local folks. They will be anybody and everybody who wants to hold a conference or a wedding in a facility that is so special and unique. You just have to go there. We have received letters from the Cleveland Pilots Association, the United Southern Bank, Anti Boat Society, Home Builders Association, Florida uh, Street Agency, Florida Airports Council, and many others who have read about this facility and said, hey, we love it. We'd love to book a conference. Can we book it now? And we, we're not taking bookings now. But the point is, without saying, you know that that means heads and bed. That's the whole point behind us uh, and, and other things as well. So tourism and development dollars coming in, going back to facility funding projects that will create more heads and beds. That's the formula, folks. It's not rocket science. It's just a simple computation formula that says coming in, going out to appropriate projects that will generate those heads and beds. So uh, there you have it. Uh, I do want to say that we also received letters of support for this project from the Holiday Inn Express, Hampton Inn, Best Western, Microtel, and on the Green. They all support this project, and they are the, the facilities that are generating the TVC dollars to the hotel. Uh, so how important is that? Um, let me just flesh out a few details about the project because I want you to get really, really excited about it. And I have something to really drive my point home that I think you're going to be astounded by. Um, as you can see, it's a two-story building. It will not have a blue roof. That's a rough rendering, but two-story building built down a 190-foot clay brick uh, pier, 40 feet wide, 190 feet long, gas lamps lighting the way, lots of glass, uh, the front, lots of glass at the back so that we can preserve the lake view. Um, I will tell you that it took us one year to secure and permit the DP be allowed to build that facility. So here you have it. One year later, a lot of sweat and tears. We get that permit. We get this gift to build, and we are doing it. And we, we want this partnership with TBC because that's how well it's supposed to work, really. Um, so uh, there you have it. The um, oh, where's it going? The back, as I said, would be uh, would be glass as well. But there will be staircases leading down from the back and from the front. So. Um, we're building it right, we're building it well. It's not completely funded. There is a mooring system that we're also <coughs> committed to build, which will be attached to the side of the pier. Uh, that will be for seaplanes and boats. Uh, if we imagine that maybe someone, uh, can, we can have a seaplane pilots association conference and they should bring their seaplanes in. Lots and lots of seaplanes. How cool would that be? Very cool, very exciting, very <coughs> unique. And uh, you know, you, you can uh, you can feel our enthusiasm, I think. Um, I brought with me five copies of our uh, application for TDC. It has our business plan uh, in it. It is a good read if you're looking for a nice long nap. And if anybody would like to read this, I have copies that we will float around. And then there's something that drives my point home. It is the city of Tiberi, and uh, Commissioner, I think Lisa is wonderful too. Uh, <laughs> are we really generating out-of-town people with anything that we're doing? Well, Mr. Dury is passing a handout that absolutely confirms that equivocally with truth that we are. Just for kicks, we have a registration book inside our top shop, and when folks come in and out of these cars, uh, we ask them to sign the registration book, but imagine that many folks do not. So over the past three years, too much to us? Okay. It's too long. Okay. Uh, over the past three years, we've collected data from everyone out of state and out of country who has actually stepped into our prop shop. These folks are in hotel rooms. Make no mistake about it. They're not spending the night in Tiberi. Or they're not. They don't have homes in Tiberi.
So it's pretty impressive. Take it home and take a look at it. Uh, it's time for me to wrap up. Thank you all very much. You've been great. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, those are some pretty awesome presentations, wouldn't you say? Uh, excuse me. Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> I've been sitting here long enough. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Bill Huron. I'm the Economic Development Director for the City of Tiberias, and I've been with the city since 07, and I'm having involved in buildings. Uh, in Lake County and its Tourist Development Council are offering capital grants for infrastructure projects to put as in bed. Project I'm proposing will do that and has been doing that. Over the last five years, Tiberias has transformed Loop Park waterfront into a seaplane base and marina, along with our base for America's Seaplane City, the cornerstone project. The city has also invested in event infrastructure, making Loop Park, sorry, we were premier uh, waterfront place to hold waterfront related events. The city now hosts 18 major events a year, including fishing tournaments, crappie, bass, classic race boat regattas, the Sunny Land Antique Classic Boat Show, jet ski races, dragon boat races, planes, trains, and barbecue, and two seaplane fly-ins a year. In fact, we have a seaplane fly-in this weekend and we welcome you to come down and visit with us on Saturday. Everybody thought John and I were inhaling and smoking when we came up with the concept of the seaplane base. You won't get 10 seaplanes a month. Since April of 2010, over 5,600 seaplanes have visited the various seaplane base marine. We call it the $100 hamburger. They get, they're in the region somewhere, they get their plane, we've got a great place, a lot of nice restaurants downtown. They fly in for a few hours, have lunch, visit at our shops and stuff, and fly back home. In March 2012, though, <coughs> and the problem we have with Tiberias, Wood Park, is our success. The current park is, and seaplane base is in this area. When you look at that footprint, it is very, very crowded. We have outgrown our ability to grow our events. Further compacting that problem is, again, economic development in downtown Tiberias. This Tiberias station property used to be vacant and they'd allow us to park boats there for boat, you know, boating events and overflow areas. Well, this <coughs> property north of the railroad tracks is being developed. The property south of the railroad tracks was slated for 26 townhomes and a 100 split covered boat marina. Fortunately, the voters in March of 212 agreed to a $3.2 million referendum voting taxes on themselves for us to purchase this additional 3.6 acres. What it will do is allow us to preserve about two and a half acres of open space to grow our events and overflow events. Plus our seaplane parking is very limited right now. At our fly-in this weekend, 40, 50 planes max, you know, and that's really shoehorning them in. When the new project is built, what we're proposing is moving a lot of the boating-related activities and dedicate this center part to seaplanes and do a major new boat ramp down at this end. But that boat ramp would be both seaplane and boat uh, friendly. So when we want to do a large seaplane fly-in, as I was in one in Lakeland uh, as part of Summit by last week, probably a hundred planes or so, we can bring planes up and then park them in the open field. So it's, it's uh, multi-purpose to help uh, expand. In that $3.2 million, we had very limited funding for to 
extend the Taffney Trail, do a boat ramp, a restroom, and then in the hand shore. What we're asking is that the estimated cost for the triple wide boat ramp, 24 space boat parking facility and restrooms is close to $900,000. What we're asking from the TDC is $400,000 the city will invest the rest. So we're asking an investment of less than 50% just for that <coughs> project, not the $3.2 million we'll have invested in the entire project in land. The construction of the boat ramp will now enable the city to host new and different events as well as expand the existing events that we have. We have a lot of listed events but we're not guaranteed those events year to year. We don't have ongoing contracts. We have to go after and keep each of those events every year. The grant application demonstrates the previous success in generating hotel room nights. Lauren and I selected seven of those 18 events over the past two or three years, and those events, seven events, generated anywhere from 2,800 rooms in 2005 to 4,500 rooms in uh, 2012. Lauren is going to hand out, we do one of, one of the very few cities, I think, that for certain events like fishing tournaments and stuff, we actually get each of the anglers to fill out a survey. How many room nights were they here? What was the price range? Where they stayed? How much do they spend for food? The one we're handing out is the Bass Open in 2012. 200 boats, 400 anglers, three days, over 1,500 hotel room nights, just for one event. But I need this expanded area to continue to be able to park boats. Additionally, uh, the city of Tiberias, not only are we generating room nights through our events, we've actually helped induce two new boutique hotels in downtown Tiberias <coughs> that will be serving our events and generating more hotel room nights and heads and beds. <laughs> I'm, I'm much shorter than all the previous speakers. Both on the night and the for the presentation. The Wood Park expansion project will allow Tiberius to continue to host several water related events that it has hosted in the past and will provide an enhanced venue to grow past events and attract new events that will put heads and beds as we have demonstrated. Got some pretty interesting stuff tonight. What do you guys say? Yeah? Yeah. Round of applause for the whole team. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, uh, why don't we do this? If you guys wouldn't mind, let's have uh, uh, Robert and Scott and John and uh, Jay Hurley come just pull your chairs up in front here so folks can direct questions to you. Because we do want to open the floor and have plenty of time for questions and answers. Stand up. You guys doing okay out there? You got another 30 minutes or so to see if we can flush out some questions and answers? Yeah? Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. I just want to make it a... Uh, stand. Oh, standing up. Stand whatever you guys want to do, but I just want to make sure that you're available for questions. Where are you? Detail is the city manager. Halfway <laughs> 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 down. Stand. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let me try to move around a little bit so I can identify the question. Okay? So, uh, anybody want to start? Anybody have a question? Okay, let's... Um, have Mr. Bader here. Yes, I see that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, staff gentlemen, open the meeting. Yes, sir. I didn't write the figure. Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. And I just want to clarify two questions. Total revenue estimated for this year is one point seven million. Uh, that was the budget for last year. We're, we're, we're projecting this year to be a little over two million dollars. About two million. Yes, sir. Okay. And the uh, administrative cost. Covered. There were two that stood out, 400000 and 200. Could you tell me what those were again? The 400000 is the amount that we put into reserves that goes to capital projects that can be used for capital projects. So we, 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 the TDC board, the Lake County board, the 
decide to put a little bit away to make sure that we're not using it all on sponsorships and that we have some left over to use for the capital projects. The administrative costs are just your general administrative costs that are used to run the auction. And that's what we're going to I think it was around 200. Okay, 102. 102. 102. Uh, that's, 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 it's about 200. And then you have 3.5 million. In reserve right now, yes, sir. Do I recall that the two point six million is going to be spent? That's correct. Right. Seventy-five. The uh, statute said it's seventy-five percent. The four percent bed tax is actually four one cent taxes, and three of those can be used uh, on, on capital. Four cannot. Sure. Question. Uh, I know that at the, the REC meeting that we had a while back, people referred to uh, Mr. Jones' article about the uh, uh, Tavares uh, Pier project, and that there were people that said that they was an over, uh, they were over budgeted, and they overran the cost. I've since sat and listened to a lot of that, and I think that maybe the city of Tavares should be able to explain that a lot of that was not cost overruns and you can explain the process of that peer that you're talking about. Sure. Um, Tamara alluded to it was a, a very long permitting process that required all sorts of extra things like dual containment uh, uh, lines for the um, water and sewer uh, and um, things like that. But basically, I think the scope um, got defined as to what is needed to make this facility self-sufficient. And at the end of the day, instead of having one elevator uh, where the guests and the um, staff use, there were two elevators after we went through the process, increasing the cost. One of the issues we have in this pier is the front of the house and the back of the house. As you know, most facilities, events, and conference centers have a front of the house and a back of the house. Everything in the back of the house, that's your garbage, that's your trucks, that's where your employees park, that's where your caterers go, all of that. Pier Pavilion, you can't do that. The front of the house becomes the back of the house. So a lot of work went into how do we deal with that? How do you get the garbage in and out? Uh, we also increased our conference room space by taking all the air conditioning out of the building and uh, putting it on the land. Uh, and that increased the cost as well. Uh, and then the other was uh, the glass. There's just a tremendous amount of glass. Uh, and we took the um, time to investigate the best way to handle this. Instead of putting drapes as the sun goes, back and forth all over this glass. There's new technology out there that allows you to dial it in. You can just dial in what level you want, up, down, middle, uh, and put the uh, additional um, revenues in there to make sure that the conference uh, space uh, can be as, as best as it can. So I would say uh, the scope um, through a year and a half of design uh, defined the budget, and that's where the budget ended. Good question. I think this question is probably for Mr. Chandler. When the CDC takes a proposal to the commission, the dollars that you are recommending they grant, is there any consideration given to where those dollars are collected? At this point, uh, the, the policy and the philosophy is, is, is no. Uh, so it's we, a pot. It's a pot, and what we are looking for is the best return on investment for the county dollars. So if they're all in one area of the county, then that's just how it happens to be. But for us, we want to look at the best return on our investment for our dollars versus trying to make sure that it's, it's an equitable at this point. Yep. Thank you. Other questions? Yes, uh, Louise. The, about the The question is, what would the capacity be for the pavilion? Upstairs and downstairs total. If seated at tables and chairs, 300. If cocktail hour, uh, you're looking at close to 600 for both floors. Other questions? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. I, I was wondering if the TDC is contributing anything towards Dark Lake County Park, the one that we spent about 
about $15 million building, and it was built as a, uh, a tourist attraction for sporting events. At this point, no, ma'am. Not a cent. And then, Doug? Uh, I did not understand how much Claremont is asking for. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the total budget was a little over 900000 We're asking for half of that, doing the 50% match. So you're about 400 in. Tavares yes. wants how much? 750 with 250000 per year. 250 year one, 250 year two, 250 year three. And then 400000 and then the boat ran at 400. Oh, okay, that's in addition. So it's 400 plus 750 over three years. Yeah. The, the, the 750 is over three years. The 400 is in the first year. Right. Right. Okay. Other questions? Yes. Scott, have you looked at any of the rowing clubs in Central Florida that you would be competing against? Uh, what well, uh, one part about that two-kilometer training course? None of them have it. I think the only one now they the lake right off of the turnpike or the turkey lake, which way they do a lot of the training. Uh, but these collegiate rowers, some of them have their own lakes to do their own training in, but it can't, it doesn't have the capacity to do more than one, you know, one club. So, but there is a big organization locally that, that you, know, that, you know, that's kind of exciting for us to do that too, but it doesn't really generate a lot of economic value because they come here, row, and then they go and they drive home. You know, we're looking for people to come here, row, spend the night, row, spend the night, row. You know, going for outside the state or outside the Central Florida region. Thank you. Yes, Mr. I have one question real quick for the TDC. Yes, sir. That you showed your revenues of 1.7, and this may have been asked, but I couldn't quite hear. Your operating or your salaries were 400 and something thousand. That's 28 percent. Do y'all not, I mean, that's pretty high for just operating. Do y'all adjust that, or who's in charge of that? Well, ultimately, it would be me. I've only been in a position for about two weeks now, so. <laughs> <laughs> so are you prepared for taking pay cuts? Who was there before that we can blame? <laughs> I think what did he answer? Yeah. Did he answer? No, you know, I'll take a stab at that because, you know, I already got blamed for being there before. Uh, you know, our entire department, our, their entire department is economic development and tourism. And before there was two departments. There was, an, there was a tourism department that had about that same salary level all by itself. And then there was an economic development uh, part that did not take any TDC funds. It came out of the general fund budget. About uh, two years ago, they combined those uh, two departments together, the tourism and economic development. Staffing went down by about 20%, and the overall revenue support both those organizations went down as well. So, but, but because they were combined, a portion of that comes from TDC and a portion from general fund. So we can expect to see that lower in the next budget. Well, we're going to crank 28% is really tough. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. But, uh, but 28% I just want to tell you the, 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 that's how that funding formula is. Yeah. We'll, hey, we'll great, be doing all great project, great project. Sorry, the other one got shelved. <laughs> <laughs> one question that was not asked that I think is interesting, and Robert, you can answer this. Is it fair to say that these funds have been collected for years, sitting in a bank account, doing nothing, while the plans were being developed and how to spend it. And if you uh, awarded every project that was here tonight, there would be a surplus at the end of the day. Uh, yeah, based on the numbers right now, that, that is So I think that's interesting that uh, every project that you saw today can be funded by this program and there's a surplus when you're done. That's important to know, I think. Mr. Goodman, you have a question? Um, yeah, um, related to the billion, uh, I'm curious just, I'm just curious. What, what is the operating structure of the project once it's, once it's open? Um, I mean, the complexities of being out on a pier are going to certainly add, add, add significantly to the operating costs of, of that. And, and I mean, is, is the city then going to have a catering staff, no. a coordination staff, no. who's running it? We, uh, we have a, did you give them the business plan? Okay. We're going to give you the business plan. Uh, that kind of addresses it in detail, but the holistic uh, view is that we will have uh, three people managing the facility and we're contracting everything out to the private sector. So if you're a wedding planner, it's contracted out. If you're a caterer, we're contracting it out. If you're a, uh, um, uh, a 
any, anything that supports it will be contacted out. What we're using is the Lake Mary model, quite frankly. Uh, they built a facility that is uh, incredible. I hope you go to their website and take a look at it. And what they did is they uh, interviewed caterers and private sector people uh, to support the facility, and then they selected through a process, you know, the top five or six that could do it. And then when you rent the facility out, uh, you've got five or six previously approved catering companies, for example, uh, and, and you can select any one of them and then they will uh, operate it. So whether it's um, uh, from the hairdresser to the, uh, to the caterer company, to the uh, wedding planner, to the events planner, all of that will be contracted out. Will the city get a commission on that? Yes. Cool. And these are all Tavari caterers, hairdressers? No. No. Oh. Lake yeah. County. Lake County. Okay. Our goal is to, when, it, when you talk about economic development, you can swirl the money that you have in your county, to swirl it around, or you can bring new money into it and swirl it. Our goal is to bring new money into Lake County to add to everybody's business. This hotel will be a featured hotel. People are going to stay here when they come to our facility. All the hotels will be featured hotels. We're not in the hotel business. Our job is to create a destination for people outside of Florida. Never in my wildest dreams would I have guessed that American Seaplane City would have an airplane come in from Switzerland, from Nicaragua, from Mexico, and from Canada. Mexico, I can understand. <laughs> It is amazing where these people are coming from. And what that means to me is we're not swirling Lake County money around anymore. We're bringing new money in, and that's helping anyone who's got a business, who's got to do a payroll. And I'll tell you, I used to run a hotel. I ran it for five years. My biggest deal was making payroll and getting through that. I understand what it takes to run a small business and the issues regarding payroll when you have a lot of employees and you're an employee capital uh, kind of business. So our goal, bring in new people, bring in new events, and let them stay at hotels, restaurants, caterers, florists, photographers, everybody who's in that business will uh, have a part or a piece of that um, operation. Countywide. Countywide. Are you booking events now? Have we started? Booking events and weddings? Uh, we're not taking bookings yet, no, not until we get six months into the bill. We've, we've got a lot of requests, and a lot of people want to be the first and on there, but we're not quite ready because of the final construction date. Completion time is estimated? March of 2014. And you have a backup plan if you don't get the TDC money? Yes, we're, we're moving forward with, with, the, with, the, with the facility. Okay. Yes. And will it be profitable at some point where it's not a burden on the city? That's the goal. Right now, we, are, we anticipate around $500,000 in revenues, uh, around uh, 600000 in expenses. 100000 of those expenses is renewal replacement to grow that to replace things as things go on. But our goal is all of our facilities we build are aimed at not being a burden on property taxes. Probably not. We're probably going to let the wedding planners choose the photographers, the hairdresser, the uh, you know the, all of those. We'll have a couple. Who, who, what is the? It's caterers is the primary one, right? Fireworks companies will be preferred. What kind? Fireworks companies will be preferred up a preferred vendor list. Fireworks. It's entirely fireworks. Yes, it is entirely possible that we will make referrals. Uh, for people, but to restrict those services, we're not anticipating doing that, except for the catering and fireworks. I just have a follow-up question. I know one of the complaints in Orlando, at the Orlando Convention Center, is they have, you know, everything on a preferred list. You know, you have to rent a stool from this person, no. get your carpeting from no. that, and, and Union. they can charge astronomical rates. Nope. So it makes it very expensive. Not happening here. We're very controlling good. the catering because we do not want our facility to have a reputation problem.
you want to make sure it's a KR facility, you're licensed, you got, uh, you're inspected, your food, no, no salmonella, no problems, because our facility will get the reputation, not the caterer. So we are very, very careful and are going to be very, very stringent on the caterer. The hairdresser, the photographer, the lim limousine company, the restaurant you go to afterwards, the train that you rent, you know, to do the things and all the things, the hotel you choose. Uh, we're going to be obviously featuring hotels like this, you know, that have a, a historic, uh, very unique uh, attribute to it, uh, as well for some of our for some of our Let facilities, them talk. not preferred. Let them talk. Uh, well, let's just, we're just fielding questions. So, uh, a couple of real quick questions. Within the, the three-person staff that you mentioned, um, is someone going to be directly involved in the selling process uh, in terms of going out and soliciting business in, in the convention market? Is that, <coughs> is, that, is, that, is that one or more of the people that are involved? Yes. But go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Well, we have a public communications director who's developed a comprehensive marketing plan. It is part of that business plan, by the way. Um, and so we are following up on many leads, uh, bridal associations, and just different places. So yes, she will be marketing the facility for us. The manager that we hire will also be involved in the marketing aspect of the, of the project. And, and then the follow-up question to that is, as you are asking for or seeking TDC funding, um, will it be a requirement um, that in order to host an event, uh, such as a wedding or anything else, that there will be a requirement I mean, are we, are we going to say you can't stay here unless you stay in a hotel? Well, yes. But, I mean, that's the we're way. not going. We, I don't envision us saying that in order to use our facility, you have to stay in a hotel. I do envision saying you're using our facility. Can you give us how many hotels? What are they? How many room nights were generated? And having the data that uh, uh, the, the TDC uh, wants. But a requirement that you have to stay in a hotel to use our facility? No. Other questions? Yes, Mark. Um, this is for Mr. Chandler. Yes, um, running these numbers through my head, if I have this right, you're allocating $400,000 per year to go into the reserve fund, yes, sir, right? Of which you can only actually use $300,000. We can, only, year. we can use 75% of the total that's in there. So, okay. so effectively. Um, so effectively, you're really only transferring about, you know, being able to allocate in a year $300,000. We're seeing, you know, a million seven we're talking about today among the, the two major prospects, some of which goes out two years, I understand. But you know there's 2.6 million in the fund already. Right. Okay. We go through this one more time, and you pick two nice projects, and we're out of money, and you can only fund up to maybe $300,000 a year. Mm -hmm. My question is, is there any consideration that these projects may be, a million dollar project may be too much, that you're taking too much out of the reserves at any one time? Well, I think one project or one combination of projects where, where yeah. I, I, I mean, very, very limited <coughs> ongoing year. I understand what you're saying. From, from our perspective, our job is really just to kind of follow what, what the policy has been set down to us. And the policy now is to follow the model, put the numbers in the model, and hopefully the model, you know, if, if, a, if a project does, is going to generate the amount of impact uh, that it says it will, then we're going to be able to, to get that back. So it'll be a good investment, and we might have to, to wait to fill up some reserves again be able to, to get to a point where we can do those types of projects again, but based on where we're at now, what we've been, uh, you know, the information we've been given to work with, uh, that, that could be the case. I mean, we could we could have five good projects, and they all they all have uh, the economic impact that we're looking for. And one quick follow-up. You, you mentioned that you're not taking into consideration where the funds are coming from. Is there anything in the model as far as allocation, geographic allocation? Not at funds? this point. Again, it's all about the general so budget. Any other questions? I have a question. Do you guys ever consider raising the money to do these projects in the private sector? 
rather than petitioning government for the funds, have you tried to fund this with private money? Um, we did try that with American Seaplane City. We went out for RFQs to the private sector, and uh, I think we got two. We're just near on top there. I think we got two proposals to yeah. operate the seaplane base. Yeah. And the profit margins they wanted were so high that the taxpayer would end up having to pay to subsidize the profit margin. So we did do it once, and at the end of the day, it didn't, uh, um, for, for us anyways, it didn't materialize. As far as um, the public and private sector coming out and building, and for in our case, a pier and a pavilion and all that, I would have loved it if the private sector did that. The private sector has not materialized to do that. Would you Good consider question. selling it? What's that? Would you consider selling it? That's a city council decision. And certainly, in my view, the recommendation of my council would be if it's serving the purpose that it's supposed to be doing, which is an economic engine for Lake County, if it's filling up hotels, creating new additional tax to bring the money back in, uh, and it's doing everything it's supposed to, uh, and the controls are in place, and it's you know available to the public, and it's filling up hotel rooms. Uh, I mean, I can envision myself recommending to the council uh, uh, to, private, to privatize it uh, if it does what it's supposed to do, not be a burden on the tax base, while being an economic end. Other questions? I have one. Can you mentioned earlier, John, that there's private business what you're doing, and it happens in cities all across the U.S., uh, and provide the vendors to supply the events there. We're sitting in one that hosts weddings and conventions right here at Lakeside Inn. We've got Mitch Inn and some other ones that also do the same thing. Are you going to work with them as far as, as, far as sister facilities? When somebody calls up and yours is already booked, obviously you're going to take it first. It's going to be a are you going to work with people like the Gundersons yeah, our and the users to help them out rather than feel like the competition is heated up from the government? I would say our primary goal is to be an economic engine for Lake County. And we want to see this hotel filled with people. Uh, we want to see Mission Inn filled with people. We're not building a spa. We want to send the Mission Inn's brand new million dollar spa. That's where they're going to go. So our goal is to create a very unique experience. American Seaplane City, there's nothing like it. You know, taking off in a seaplane, arriving at a seaplane, and our downtown and everything we're doing with the trains and everything. And the market can promote and bring new people and new money and then feed all of our business community. So I have a vision having a very close relationship with uh, this hotel, close relationship with all of the hotels uh, so that they, uh, you know, we're creating a destination in Lake County with a series of anchors, yeah. well, and, that, well, and that's, that's the goal. Well, that spirit will work. Yeah, it will. Hey, since John won't let me sit down while he's talking, anybody got any questions for Lever? <laughs> <laughs> Is there a business that you do not think is uh, appropriate for civil entrepreneurialism? My personal yeah. opinion? Mm -hmm. uh, boy, that's a long, I'd have to... I'm just yeah. wondering, you know, where's the line? Manufacturing. Uh, yeah, manufacturing's a good one, <laughs> probably. <laughs> oh, I hear the prisoners manufacture in some of these prisons, so I don't know about that. Any uh, other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Here's one. Yes. Um, uh, Scott, um, I noticed on your list of interested parties you have uh, on public hospital listed, who owns NTC, the training center. Um, do you envision any kind of partnership that you can develop, possibly even uh, taking the, uh, either the NTC or, or some other type of sponsorship money to say it's the now the National Training Center growing house or something uh, like that. I, I, I think their initial interest is they have this elite athletic training engine down there and the rowers that we're going to get are going to be the top flight collegiate rowers and Olympic rowers and they want to
strengthening. I mean, it, not just rowing, but the, the, the physical, uh, you know, performance endurance training. So I think that that's their interest. They want to capitalize on that training market. Uh, who, who's interested? Uh, the, 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 yeah, the hospital, the NCC. Okay, right, right. So it'll be like partnership. Yes. Okay. I'm just wondering if you get any money out, but, you know, for name price. Two more questions. Yeah. So, Patricia Sullivan's got a question, and then Mrs. Painter. Patricia Burney, and then Mrs. Painter. I, I just remember, Mr. Chandler, I didn't remember what were the personnel calls for the um, department. I, I thought those were 400,000. Those were a little over 400,000. And then the administration, yeah, it was a little over. And what were the administration calls? A little over 200. Yeah, I remember that. Then.